Baruch Hashem Yahuwah, by Hashem Yahusha HaMashiach. Bless your name, O Yah, creator of all things. Abba, you are first and you are last. You are the beginning and the end, Abba. Father, we come before you humbly, just saying, Toda Rabba, for everything that you have done, Tob and Ra, in this season. Father, we thank you for sparing us, Abba, for blessing us with your many blessings, small and great, Abba, Yah. Father, we ask that you allow us to not take them for granted, that you allow your mercy to not be taken for granted, Abba Yah. That as we continue to strive, that you strengthen us in areas where we are weak, that you continue to allow us to be meshed and knitted together, Abba Yah, that what you join together, let no man separate. Father, we continue to ask for your forgiveness for any shortcomings, for any missing of the mark, Abba Yah, that others may see, but we may not, Abba Yah. We just ask for your grace and your mercy to continue to strive and to walk in your perfection, Yah. Father, I ask that you bless the mouths of the Maureen, that you bless Maureen that we on tonight, that you allow his words to be piercing to our hearts, Abba Yah, to hit his target. And I ask that you allow the brothers on this call to have their ears to receive. I bless your name, O Yah. I ask that you bless those that are on the call who could not make it, who aspire to be here. Toda Rabbi Yah, I thank you. In the name of Yahusha HaMashiach, blessed are you, O Yah. Blessed is your name, O Yah. And blessed is he that comes in the name of Yah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, 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 Hold on, Keith. Um, <clears throat> wanted to get uh, kind of. Um, I know since we are we are um, starting uh, gift study over in a sense. Uh, gift for those who don't know is um, growing in faith together, which happens every other Kamishi or um, Thursday um, on the same line. Um, I know since we're kind of resetting that and going back to the concept of uh, relationships, especially marriages. Um, I wanted to, especially since this demand study and most are not on gift, to kind of go into that a little bit more um, and speak on the speak on the topic, you know, just uh, have conversation with the man. So um, if, I, if we can, I'm gonna read two verses, uh, and then you guys to kind of tell me the correlation. So first, can we go to the book of uh, Mishle, commonly called Proverbs, chapter 29 and 18. Um, is somebody willing to read for me? If if not, I got it. I can read for you, my lord. Okay, okay. Uh, shalom, shalom, how you feeling? Hey, Lala Tov, Mori Dawu. Everything is beautiful on my end. Pray everything is peaceful with you and your mishpaka. Uh, hallelujah. Yeah. Wonderful. Mishle, open arm, Mishle. Uh, Mishle, uh, 29, 18. Yes, it is. Mishle, also known as Proverbs 29, 18. When there is no vision, the people cast off for strength. Because he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Okay. So uh, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy, happy mm -hmm. is he. Hmm. So where well, there is no vision, uh, that word for vision is own, his own, which definitely means uh, vision speaking um mostly in a prophetic state usually when they used uh most times that is being used um 
so with so where where there is no prophetic vision the people perish so even the aspect of well hold on let me read the other the other scripture first i ain't gonna do that yet can we go to the book of uh yes yeah Yeshia chapter 55. And we're going to read only two verses in there. Uh, eight and nine. Uh, I don't. So, Yeshiyahu, come and call Isaiah 55, verses eight and nine. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, say if Yah. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Okay, okay. So, everybody, okay. Um, so I'm sure that we have all uh, heard and or read both of these verses. Um, what is their correlation, or what is what do y'all see? Um, if I may, um, yeah, I, I just I go from there. What do y'all see between Michelle twenty nine eighteen and Yeshayahu fifty five eight and nine? Now, okay. Well, I say I know. I kn if anybody gonna shoot a free throw, it's gonna be Shah Shamal. Uh, go ahead, Aki. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. I appreciate most. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Yeah. From what I heard, um, the correlation that I see, uh, you know that um, okay. So I may have a vision. You know, I'm gonna do this this way. I'm going to have this amount of knowledge at this certain time. I'm going to have this job at this time. But you know, my vision is not always the most highest vision. Um, so let's say if I'm leading someone, whether it be you know, in a marriage or whether it just be a group of people, you know, I have to, I guess, always keep an open mind because my plan can always change you know, because I don't know everything that the most high is doing. You know, so, because I think of, you know, Moshe, Moshe didn't know exactly what the Most High was going to do at the, you know, exact time, you know, because when he spoke to him, I don't think, you know, he knew that was going to happen. So the Most High was kind of walking him through it, you know, so that's something I recently have been learning, you know, when things change, it doesn't always mean, you know, something's bad is going to happen, or it doesn't always mean, you know, something's going wrong, you know, but I yield. Okay, okay. Um... You 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 right there. Um, it's kind of like those memes uh, where the dudes are mining for diamonds, and and you see the one where the person's like right there by the diamonds, but he turned back. Exactly what you just did. Uh, <laughs> but but you were right there, shot. You you were you were right there. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna you know try to tie it in to to what the ox just said, right? So when we go back to Michelle, uh, said without. Uh, shalom, shalom, Jaquan, um, Jim Well as well. Uh, but uh, 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 Michelet, right? It said um, it cast off restraint. So that word for cast off restraint, uh, what people perish, um, that's really what it means is to cast off restraint or to become loose, right? Or uh, even to become naked, to be exposed. So they they kind of veer off from where they should be going, right? And it said, of course, uh, he who keeps or guards the instructions, he is blessed, right? So that's on one side. Then when you go to Isaiah, it said, my ways are not your ways, neither are my thoughts, your thoughts. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways and my thoughts above yours, right? So to tie, to tie those back in, Michele, is saying that you are you are required to have a vision. You 
it is necessary for you to have a vision in order for you to stay aligned with the will. Right? So as men, first and foremost, do you have that vision? And it's interesting that that word is kazon because that's even more than that's when, when you talk about prophecy, that's even higher than a uh, a dream. So you have dreams and then you have visions. So a vision is is a little bit deeper than the dream aspect, right? That's like the second tier. So are we as men, and this is a question that we could touch on and we'll uh, touch on um, after I go back to Isaiah. Are we are we asking for and are we receiving visions before we begin to give instruction to those who are following us or before we even begin to move? Or are you, just as the uh, proverb says, are you casting off restraint and you're just moving according to your own your own thoughts and your own ways. And there's something else in the Isaiah passage I think is very, very key that um, when it comes to vision that I don't think that we normally touch on. Um, so I guess the, the first question would be, have you received a vision for your family, especially for those who are married, and I'm looking through the get through the list, and um, it's a lot of a lot of us up here have um, sides or capable capable help. So, man, what's the vision? Okay. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. It's okay. Um, I'm gonna touch on. Let's 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 go back. Okay, Shasha, Shasha yeah. Martin. That one kind of sounds like a rhetorical question, but uh, I do have an nah. answer. It wasn't a rhetorical question. Okay. Yeah. Because, um, oh, go go ahead. Oh no. So, uh, you no. Know, my vision for for my life is you know which says you know do things greater than Mashiach, you know, that's my goal, um, you know, to get out you know, all the leaven, you know, all the stuff that I came in contact with on this earth, you know, and somehow, you know, reach, you know, a certain level why I am, you know, um, I guess you could say righteous or set apart in the midst of righteous and, and set apart people, but um, I yield. Okay. Um. Hmm. I can understand that. Uh, Yumi Yahoo, all right. Sorry, everybody. Um, I just listened to my brother, Shash Shamal. Um, don't have an answer specifically to your question, but I do want to point out, as you was reading the Michele, as far as um, you know, without that vision, as you mentioned, you know, like the, the, the left out there at large, you know, people are cast off restraint or the people perish. I just know it's important, as you mentioned in the second part of that, um, that precept is, but he that keepeth the law. So as long as, one important aspect I would like to say, as you are setting your goals or you may have a vision or let's say the most I may even touch and spoke, spoken to you, um, make sure everything is in accordance with his Torah, you know, because, um, you know, it speaks about in Devarim, right? The Most High sends that prop or that dream of dreams. And they saying, let's go out and, and serve these other deities. Um, the creator's telling us, he's testing us right there to see whether or not we are true and faithful to him. So through it all, as the Most High revealed things to us or you feel the creator speaking to you, just make sure everything that you do is, is um, within the guidelines of the Torah. I yield to it. Okay, hallelujah. So that's going to be how you're even eligible to get the vision. So 
came. Um, uh, um, I don't, you know, Yahoo, you, everything has to be aligned within the Torah, right? Because when you look at our prophets who received these uh, kazon, they were already in, in obedience and in submission to their creator. Correct? I believe so. So then, then they were able to be eligible to receive a vision to move forth and to do something uh, more on a uh, more on an assignment level, okay. which goes back, okay, which which goes back to what we're talking about as far as general Torah, and then you have your personal Torah. So the general Torah is everybody should be keeping Torah. Nobody should be looking at nobody else's wife. Nobody should be stealing. Everybody should be looking out for one another, making sure that we're all straight. Okay, now once you have that basic level, now has the creator began to tell you or show you what it is that you're supposed to be doing? For example, right? Um, the story of, uh, of our forefather, Abraham. Now, for those who, you know, read uh, extra texts and so on and so forth, um, we, we know what is purported to be the backstory of Abraham. Um, smashing the idols in his father's house, um, going to learn and to seek out who the creator is for himself, um, going up against Nimrod, so on and so forth, right? So we, we see this backstory, right, where he's just learning how to be obedient, right? Going back to what Adon said in regards to Torah. So learning how to be obedient and then maintaining that obedience for a, a specific time. <laughs> Exactly. Then from there, we see that Genesis chapter 12, to go into the uh, um, set apart literature, we see that now the Most High calls him, right? And I'm going to get back to Isaiah in a second. But we see in, in Genesis 12 that now the Most High calls, it says now, um, it's likely a don't, some, sometime I read, uh, <laughs> verse 12, it says, uh, now Yahuwah has said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed now knowing the creator's uh, journey with Abram did he tell him everything that would occur in Genesis 12 You get on my, you ain't got to raise your hand. It's, it's a conversation with the brothers. From my understanding, low. Okay. Right. Um, not call. He did not. But he told him, he told him what, what the overall vision was. He told him what the overall vision was which goes back to Isaiah 55. Now, I said that there was something that was in, in these two verses, right? Um, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. Uh, Adon, Yermiah, can, can, you, can you read that one more time? And brothers, I need y'all to tell me, what is it in regards to vision that sticks out to you that would then help us in what we are to be doing? Okay. And, okay. No, I didn't want to stop your train of thought. I thought... So like we, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, 4, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith Yah. For as the heavens are high, higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. Huh. So what is the, what is it that, sticks out to you right that that is another stitch in what we're talking about what kind of brings these things together or what do you see that sticks out that could be a nugget into what we are talking about right now
Shalom, more I think I may have a stab at it. Okay, Shalom, Shalom, Marquis. Go ahead, take your free throw. So, so what I'm gathering is, um, is um, we we may not know why we're doing certain things or why he may be leading us down a certain path. You know, it's it's not really for us to question, but the but for us to have faith. Are you? Uh, definitely have have faith, right? So you're gonna have to have faith in order to walk. But okay, all right. Let me just let's go back. To, so you definitely going are going to have to have faith faith before you begin to walk and go anywhere. But in regards to vision, right? Has anybody um, been in or seen those uh, crop fields, right? Where somebody uh, cut something out, maybe you're driving on the interstate, somebody cuts a name with some bushes, um, but you can't really see it. Uh, what do you need to do in order to get a better view? Pull over, get up a little closer, maybe. Um, low, but you, uh, it's actually the opposite. Uh, by yourself. Away. What did it? Oh, excuse me. What did it don't say? Uh, I'm not sure, but I think he said it right there. But go ahead. Okay, I was gonna say yeah, you gotta elevate. Okay. Absolutely. And Jimmy, well, um, I saw your comment as well. You have to get above. So he said, my ways are not your ways, nor my thoughts, your thoughts, but as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways and my thoughts above yours. So when we're talking about vision, right, which remember that is a prophetic state. That is a, that is something that is prophetic, which comes from our creator, right? The vision should never be horizontal. It should never, it's, you should not have a horizontal view of the vision. The goal is to have an aerial view of the vision, which only comes from the creator, which means that you can't move until the creator tells you to move because you don't know the full scope of where you're supposed to be going. So when you go to Abraham, he tells him the entire picture. Now it is up to Abraham to wait step by step in order for him to manifest the entire vision that was given to him. So I have a couple of examples of the difference between aerial and horizontal. Let's go to... Um, Back, back to the book of Bereshit, chapter 13. We're going to start at verse 7 through 11, Aki. In Bereshit, chapter 13, verse 7 through 11. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we are brothers. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou will take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou take the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and behold, and beheld all the plain of the Jordan, and that it was well watered everywhere before Yah destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of Yah, like the land of Mizraim, as thou goest unto Zoar. So Lot chose him all the plain of the Jordan. And Lot journeyed east 
and they separated themselves, the one from the other. Hey, Torah. So, <laughs> nice. so, so in regards to, in regards to this particular passage, right? What are the, what is the horizontal view, right? Or what is the, what is the earth view, or the options? Let me let me see if I can rephrase that. What, in regards to vision, of load. Or lot. What vision is he using? How do you know? And what would be the aerial view? I like it. Hold on. Couple hands. Let's see. Um, okay. Uh um, Eliezer, I saw your hand up. I, and then we're gonna go shy. I mean, and then we're gonna go Uzi for those who haven't spoken first, and then we're gonna go bot yourself for Shah Shamar. I saw your hand up, E. You can't duck it down. There we go. Um, I would say the short or the the horizontal view is a nearsighted view. Um, he saw what was already in front of him, where he was familiar with, and it was comfortable to him. So he didn't want to pick up a move. Where, <clears throat> as Abraham, uh, he would gave him the option, and then saw where he was about to go was fertile and was robust, and would be able to sustain him and allow room for growth. Okay, okay, Todaki. So the aerial, I mean, so the horizontal view or the short side of view was based upon what he saw, okay? Correct? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, Uzi? Uzi, yeah. Kane, I was gonna say he was looking at it from a perspective of his vision, his sight, um, pretty much the, the right now instead of the future, I yeah. Hmm, okay, okay. So now we kind of tap it into the aerial. Um, uh, Sasha Ma, you know, about yourself, I saw your hand drop, but you can uh, chime in at the shot. Go ahead, Aki. Okay, yeah, I mean, I can yield, you know, uh, yourself, because we haven't heard him yet, you know, so. Yourself? You know I like to go last. I don't know what y'all doing, but uh, <laughs> but um, my I'm I'm thinking about it a little bit a little bit differently because we're talking about that that surface level, right? This it was really it was really just what was uh, pleasant to the eye at that moment because it says and he looked up, so that was kind of the, uh, one of the key factors in that aspect right there. So a lot of times, especially for us men, sometimes we'll see something right there in front of us. It can be pleasant, can be, uh, uh, I would say like beneficial and things like that, <clears throat> uh, given the circumstance. But in the hindsight hindsight of it all, you know, is it truly what the Most High has in store for you? Um, one, of the, one of the scriptures kind of actually runs through my mind when I think about that was the, uh, going back to the very beginning, where uh, Kawa was uh, coerced by the Nakash. But at the end of the day, she chose to partake in the fruit because of how it looked. It was desirable for her at that moment in time, rather than the big picture right there in front. You feel what I'm saying? If, it's, if we can get past, <clears throat> just that front two view of what is placed before us, then not to steal the more is thunder, but you get to verse 12 and on where the most high reveals to Abraham, gives him that aerial view of the bigger picture. Tells him to look to the left, look to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west, everywhere that your feet treads upon, I give this land to you, paraphrasing. But that was the bigger picture. That was actually what Lot was supposed to partake in as well. 
But just for the fact of, oh, this place right here is well watered, it looks pretty good. You know, say, so I'm going to go roll over here. That was that horizontal view. So I yield the floor to um, Mark. I see his hand up. Okay. Um, uh, Sha, and then I got you, uh, E. Okay, and you obviously said, you know, a lot, you know, like um, you just spoke about, you know, he was kind of focused on the material things, you know, just things on a, a, a basic level, I would say, you know, those things are still useful, but, you know, a relationship, you know, with a righteous brother, you know, is is better than something material. It seems like Abraham, you know, he said, you know, we'd be brother, and I work for brother, it is, you know, Ak, which means, you know, brother of same parent or brother, you know, of the same tribe. And I think, you know, especially the men, you're, you're going to have disagreements, but I think if you just want to separate, I think that should be the absolute last resort, you know, if everything else fails. Because, you know, once, you know, you have, once you start separating, you know, um, men, that's when they get weaker, you know. So you know, I like, you know, how Abraham, you know, he said, you know, we'd be brethren. You know, that's love behind that. So I yield. Mm. Kang, Kang, told, told me about it. You told me about uh, e, you put you you put your hand back up. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say um, he put it in to avoid the um, the conflict, so that all parties would be happy. He let the Most High work it out by letting the other party, or in this case, Lot, make his choice so that he would be satisfied, knowing that the Most High would take him where he was supposed to be, whether it was staying or moving knowing that he would sustain them and then seeing where the Most High ultimately took him was actually better than where they were currently at. So ultimately putting it in the Most High's hands and letting it work itself out like that. Yes, yes, okay, okay. Y'all came to, y'all came to play tonight. Uh, Jimmy Well, go ahead, Aki. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom, Aki. And, um, now that's basically what I was gonna say. Um, Abram had, uh, he looked at everything and he, he, when, when Abraham uh, observed everything, he didn't necessarily go by the observance of the, the substance, but he already was moving in the blessing of the most high and know that, you know, he would be good and sustained whichever side that lot went. Um, and lot, he had the horizontal vision, like the brothers were saying before, seeing, you know, what would be good for him. But um, Abram, he just, he, he went with knowing that wherever he was, he was covered because the Most High would be ordaining his steps. Um, or um, Most High is just with him, period. So that's that. Okay, okay. You know, um, first and foremost, glad to hear your voice, Haki. Uh, and um, everybody's everybody's thought was on on point. Um, even yourself, go, going back to the garden. Um, I didn't want to mess with Pua because you know we pick on our foremother a lot. But okay, um, Sha said something that I think was very crucial, right? Which was the the statement of separation should have been the last resort but due to the horizontal view of of low right and the situation that was occurring he had he was given two options but he really had three it was a in a sense it was a trick question This was a, this was a, um, and me and Yosef talk about this a lot, right? The, 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 this was a opportunity, and I believe um, Moy Baruch also spoke on it. This was an opportunity to elevate. 2918, how both of y'all saying 2918? What is 2918? Genesis 2918? What are y'all talking about, Yosef and E? 
Oh, oh, proverb. Okay, slackly. Okay, so this was an opportunity. This is an opportunity for for Lot to elevate to an aerial view, right? Abraham said, "Go either left or go right, right? Horizontal directions." But the aerial view should have been, or the view, or the the thought pattern from above is, I'm not going anywhere. And what I am going to separate from me is not my brother. I'm going to separate from the things that are causing the strife. I'm not separating from you. I'm going to cut off my desire or what I believe is more important than staying with the one that the Most High has blessed. Um, and I got you, Jimmy. Well, so when we're looking at this, when we're looking at this, right, Abraham, as um, E and Jimmy Well said, they did not give, they did not, well, Abraham did not move. He stayed still. The same way that without the vision, right, you don't move. If the creator hasn't told you to move, you don't move. The only thing Abraham was trying to do was maintain peace between the brothers. And instead of understanding that if it's the material that creates the strife, then you remove the material, not the brother. Because as we are looking uh, more and more into the story, right? Lot, <laughs> Lot comes back to Abraham just in the next chapter. Abraham, the, the Most High sends Abraham to go get Lot again and bring him back to the same situation of do you go back to Sodom and Gomorrah where he came from or do you want or do you choose the aerial view of this man has to be blessed? Um, I saw Jimmy well and I saw about yourself. Yeah, thank you, bro. Um, to when you, why are you talking about the aerial view? It's something that I'm, I'm gathering now um, and a little further ahead, especially what you just talked on about Abram having to go back and get Lot, um, basically rescuing Lot and all of Sodom and Gomorrah. But a little further past that, um, the Most High had to go get Lot out of that land that he chose to go to. He redeemed Lot later on because what Lot perceived as, like the brother was saying, when Eve seen the fruit, she seen it was good. And so that's why she pursued it. Um, and him seeing the land, he saw something where he can benefit from. And he pursued it. And not keeping that, that horizontal view, which you're speaking about, um, he's only seeing what's in front of him and not the aerial view. But I'm, I'm, I'm seeing like the whole picture now that him pursuing what he perceived is right. Because um, when you, you gave the scripture verse of, of, of the Lord saying, my thoughts are not your thoughts and um, my thoughts are uh, above basically and heavily thoughts and preparation forgive me but um it reminds me of the scripture verse there's a way that seems right to a man it seems right but the end is death so a lot going in that direction he kind of got like a fair warning like this place isn't really great to be at and abraham had to you know redeem him from that and then Later on down the road, the Most High had to go redeem him from that land. So that's all I have to say. Okay. Um, uh, and I don't, yum, yum, uh, and then I got you, Yosef. He said, um, some people may not see your vision or even understand your spiritual elevation. To separate at times may be necessary. Um, absolutely. Uh, and I agree with that, right? And and agreeing with that, that's why you don't move, right? And the separation occurs 
from that person. It's kind of like when you come into this walk, you don't you don't necessarily purposely separate from the people, your friends that you were kicking it with, so on and so forth, right? You you just walk the way that you're walking, and they themselves decide to leave from you. So the separation is necessary. It's just never you who usually initiates it. It's always somebody else who decides to pick up a lead. Uh, Yosef? And at all. Very, very eloquently spoken. Um, I had to go back and do a little bit of digging. And of course, I had to see what that word for guard, guard is. And of course, it is uh, Shamar. Because I wanted to see uh, what the most I was painting this picture in my head. If you, you know, those uh, those guards that go and stand watch in London, those guys that never move, they stand completely still, no matter what. That's the interesting thing about it. Doesn't matter the weather, doesn't matter the people coming and playing around with them, taking pictures with them. They stand guard 24 seven, you know, and they stay in that same posture, they don't move. So it was interesting to, to hear that aspect of how Abraham was standing in the square, he did not move. He stood in that aspect of keeping the Torah, um, which is a little bit interesting because if you go back up to Isaiah uh, 55 and 6, and it says, seek, Yeho seek Yehovah while he is to be found. Call on him while he is near. Um, did a lesson a while back when we was talking about hearing the creator. And it was in, a, what was that, First Samuel 3? And it describes how during that time that the visions were a dime and a dozen. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but it was a dime and a dozen. So it was quite hard to find the creator during that time frame, just within the aspect of visions themselves. So, mm. I see a lot, and I see a lot of times, especially with our people pointing the finger at myself first, right? That a lot of times we'll put our self ambitions, again, what's right there in front of you, and we'll place that before what the Most High already has in store for you. It's already there. Sometimes we might get a little bit, uh, quote unquote, impatient, especially if there's quarrel, if there's strife. You don't want to really be in that type of environment anymore. So you'll take the quickest way out rather than taking the beaten path, which essentially is the hardest path. I can only imagine how that felt <clears throat> to go before your brother and be like, whatever, whatever you choose, I will choose the opposite. Just so that we can relinquish this strife and content that we have with each other. But that's and I like what Shai said. That's 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 really the whole test of it all. Cain, there was land that was to be promised, but that was the actual test of it. To see how you would deal with your brother, especially in times of quarrel. By you, the floor. Okay. Okay. So. So. We see here, right, just, just one example of um, the horizontal view and going back to the, the, the concept of vision and then leading as men. Um, we can't go off of what we see physically unless it has, unless it only confirms what was told to us beforehand. Right? So, <clears throat> the goal is always to move when the cloud, the uh, proverbial cloud by day or the fire by night moves. Right. So just um, when I was in, in Georgia and I was making my transition into the walk, um, actually, you know, right around this time would be uh, eight years. So as I was making my transition and I was in the A, there were things that the creator showed me 
that gave me the ability to know that it was time to come back to Virginia, right? And if I wasn't looking, because these things were subtle, then when the opportunity came to choose whether to stay there, because you know I just got picked up for a job, making good money, or come back here to Norfolk State, I would have chose what was in front of me if I did not see the signs beforehand. So the signs came and then the test came. So if we're not looking for the signs leading up to the test, then we're going to fail. It's kind of like um, I was uh, watching a movie, well, watching a video um, today with the students and um, an aspect of focus came up, right? The movie Focus. Um, and in the movie, for those who've seen it, uh, it's a Will Smith movie. It's a part in the movie where uh, he bets a dude at a football game. He tell him, pick a number, any number. He picks 55, right? And he's going through how, how he knew that he was going to pick the number 55. And he said that we have been playing with his subconscious the entire day. All day he saw 55. So he heard the number 55 all day. And then when it came to it, that's the number that he chose. Now, that was to his detriment because, you know, it's a movie. But in all actuality, that's how the creator does us. He gives you the vision, right? or the sight, and you have to be able to have the view, which is the aerial view or the heavenly view, the insight in order to see it. So then when it does manifest in the physical, you are able to choose the correct path because he's already been telling you which way to go. So <clears throat> now I want to go to um, another Another example of horizontal view, which is going to be interesting because this, well, we'll see when we get there. Let's go to the book of um, Melakim Aleph, 1 Kings chapter 12. Uh, Aki, can you uh, read verses uh, 1 through 14? Okay. And um, Aleph uh, Melakim, amen. Chapter 12, verses 1 through, you said 14? Okay. All right, blessed day. All right, okay. And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel was come to Shechem to make him king. And it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, heard of it, for he was yet in Egypt, whither he had fleed from the presence of King Shalomo, and Jeroboam dwelt in Mizraim. And they sent and called him that Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spoke unto Rehoboam, saying, Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore make thou the grievous service of thy father and his heavy yoke, which he put upon us lighter, and we will serve thee. And he said unto them, Depart ye for three days, then come again to me. And the people departed. And King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men <laughs> that stood before Shalomo, his father, while he yet lived, saying, What counsel give ye me to return answer to this people? And they spoke unto him, saying, If thou will be a servant unto this people this day, and will serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. But Rehoboam forsook the counsel of the old men, which they have given him, and took counsel with the young men that were grown up with him and stood before him. And he said unto them, What counsel give ye that we may return answer to this people who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke of thy father make the yoke that thy father did put upon us lighter. And the young men that were grown up with him spoken to him saying, thus shalt thou say unto this people that spoken to thee saying, thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us, thus shalt thou sp speak unto them. My little finger is thicker than my father's loins. And now, whereas my father did burden you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, 
but I will chastise you with scorpions. Yeah. Yeah, told her about it, though. I know I was I know you ain't playing on reading that much. But um, <laughs> um mm. so we see it, right? Even is is it's one verse where once again before the test, the most high shows you the answer. He gives you the aerial view. The eldest, the eldest said very, very plainly that if you do this today, if you serve the people today, they will serve you forever. So one day of humility turns into a lifetime of exaltation. Cain, choose wisely. But a lot of us men, we can't take, we can't take being humble today. Whether that's humble to the creator first and foremost, humble to our wives, humble to humble to our brothers, humble to even our sisters. We we can't take being humble because we feel like we should, because we are in a state of uh, dominion, right? We are in a state of leadership that everybody should bow to us. And because of that, because of the, uh, because of that flaw, right? That one mental flaw, which is probably the mental flaw that we mostly all have as men is like just there, right? That one flaw of pride, that one flaw leads us to seeking out, as the scripture says, something that pleases the ear. So we see here, King listens to those that he grew up with. I'm, I'm not even getting into the uh, elder verse, the um, contemporary conversation it's just more about are you looking at now or are you looking at the bigger picture which is over time so from Lot, we see that we can't just go off of what we see and as men especially men who mostly i believe they have women women have sight women see a lot more than what we see So do we yield to that, to tie in both points? Do you yield to that, to that wisdom and to that sight, to that vision? Can you hear that sight? Or are you going to look for something that, something that fits your mental state? And your thoughts and your ways. Adon Yom Yahu. Okay, and um, I mean, just love the way you kind of tying everything together. Just want to just add, you know, because I know we're on this, this spiritual journey. The Ruach speaks to us all the time, as you mentioned. Sometimes the messages are subtle, sometimes they're, they're very clear and you can see it. Um, but listen to that small, still voice, right? And be able to take heed to what you're supposed to do. And a lot of times when you are taking heed to what you're supposed to do, it's the hard decision to make. It's not going to be the easy decision. Like it was so easy for Lot just to get up and, and go in that direction. And so everything was already established. But as we uh, are on this journey to get closer to the Almighty, um, it's, it's going to... Um, it's going to take a lot of patience like Abraham had, you know, um, and we have to, I do want to hit on the fact that the counsel of, of those who have traveled the road is very important. You know, most I always told us to seek the elders, you know, to, to get that wisdom and that insight. And, and even told our Rabbah for even touching the piece about, you know, the wisdom of, of our Nashim, you know, and um, just just pray that we just remain humble 
and allow our ego to, to really ease out, not to cloud our judgment when it comes to us really um, receiving the word of Yah. I yield to our Torah um, and definitely uh, by yourself. Okay, I'm going to continue with my, with my Ak in that same vein. That's the reason why a lot of times the road that the Most High sets before you is it, never meant to be easy. It's always meant to cause refinement, pass through the fire, if you will. So that aspect of being humble during that whole entire time, it, even the aspect of being humble is hard. Even the aspect of, like Real Boom, listening to the elders, just that one moment was hard. Hence, that's why he took the easy route. Going back again to that beaten path, it's, it's, it's never meant to be easy. But when you see that it's not easy, just have, a, just have that insight that that's the creator's path that you should take. Take that path. Then understand at the end of, of it, <clears throat> There's going to be, mm, <laughs> it's going to be light at the tunnel, the cliche term. It's going to be light at the tunnel, so to speak. Ayo. Okay. Okay. And, and even with uh, the aspect of possibly, you know, the most high giving you uh, confirmation even before the test, or in this regards, hearing, hearing the view. Right or hearing the wisdom, in this case of the elders, and believing that that's the right choice. Um, even with that, still cloud by day, fire by night mentality, as in I'm not moving until the Creator tells me to move. Now, how do we know that this is the way of our forefathers? Um, can anybody give me an example of uh, our forefather hearing? What, what they should do, but then waiting for the creator to confirm that before they move. Um, I'll uh, narrow it down to the book of uh, Bereshit. There's two instances that come to mind, but y'all can let me know. Don't hear me out. Mm, I'm thinking about um, Yaakov. I'm thinking about the ah. situation here yeah, that he was dealing with with his father-in-law and how he saw that, you know, that entire environment just really wasn't uh, conducive for him to stay there anymore. And he knew it was time to leave. Um, so I think um, my memories, I didn't go back to, to fact check it, but I think the creator did speak to him and told him that it was it was time to go. Yes, because he, he gave him the vision okay. as far as the cattle was concerned. And this is how you're going to be able to to leave and, and get your retribution for all the wrong that he did you. So I'll say Yaakov when he was leaving his uncle Laban's body. Okay, 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 the dog. Uh, Yosef? So I'm also going to say Yaakov any time where uh, he got word from his son Yosef. And before he made any type of move, he went to go seek the creator during that time in that same book of Bereshit. And then once the creator gave him confirmation to move and move to uh, Mizraim, that's when he actually took up his family and left. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and those are both uh, key, right? Um, I was actually talking about the one with yourself and then I don't give you one with LeBron. I forgot about that one, but true. And then, so that's uh, something coming from a son. Um, as far as the uh, second example was wisdom or the vision coming from a son of where everybody should be. And he, go get, he goes to get confirmation. Um, the uh, example that Adon Yermia brought forth, that was, that was the uh, subtle clues, right? Using your... Uh, context clues around you to know that all right things are starting to get a little shaky here i'm not sure what's going on i'm not just going to jump the gun but i'm gonna sit i'm gonna sit here right 
you know, it's a different. We all, man, so I'm, I'm sure you watch football. The, the great quarterbacks, they don't get shaky when the pocket gets smaller. The great quarterbacks are able to still look downfield and have vision while the pocket is getting smaller. So then when the opportunity arises, right, where the go-ahead is there or the window opens, then they're able to deliver the pass. That's how we should be. Stand up where we're supposed to be. And as the pocket gets smaller, the creator always gives us an out. But it's, it's when you try to run out the pocket too early that you usually end up getting smacked. Or the most I opens the window, but you're not sure because your faith and your relationship isn't tight. So you stay in there a little bit too long and the pocket collapses. That comes from having or not having the vision and the ability to hear when the Most High says go. Another one, another instance is when Abraham was told by his Isha, right? Because one, one thing that I believe that if we've been 100, that men can admit is we don't like really taking advice from our women. We don't like listening to our women. For some reason, it seems as if men have this complex to where if I'm leading you, you shouldn't be telling me what I should be doing. But for some reason, we don't necessarily see that too much from our forefathers in scripture. It's something that they, something that when they heard, something that they did, which was get confirmation. As you see, Abraham, when Sarah says, uh, Hagar and a little badass boy, both of them got to go. Both of them got to go. And even though it grieved him, he still had to go confirm. <laughs> he still had to go confirm. And the most I said, what? Listen to your Isha. For this is correct. So it's it's a it's a situation where, yes, even when we get the wisdom, right, we have to be able to hear the wisdom and wait and confirm the wisdom with our creator. That's that's the vision. The most high gives the man, the vision, but he gives the woman details in order to fulfill the vision. And you have to know when the detail is coming from the creator or when it's coming from you or when it's coming from the carnal part or the earthly part of your wife, of your brother, of whatever is around you. Is it the aerial view or is it the horizontal view? That's how you... That's when you'll be able to stand straight and not lose restraint, not perish. Because you know what the creator told you, you know where you're going, you're just waiting for the next instruction and you're looking, having a 360 view and having your ear set to the creator uh, as a don't say for that still small voice to know when am I supposed to move? Where am I supposed to move? How am I supposed to move? That is how we are to lead our households. That's the only way that we can lead our households. And the reason why we, we have so much turmoil or we have strife or people are fighting for uh, dominion in the household continuously is because the woman or your children are casting off restraint because you have no vision. And that's rough for a lot of us to hear, but that's the truth. If the vision is order and you're walking in order and you're walking in the vision the creator gave you, everything around you should submit because he gave you the dominion for it to happen. And if it doesn't submit, i.e. children of the wilderness, they have to be removed. The creator will remove it. You just stay where I put you at. That's having the vision. So 
as men, we have to get back to obtaining vision. Period. It's not about your feelings. We talk about the women having feelings, but men, we move very emotional. We move in our emotions as well. It just doesn't look like the Nashim or the women, but we move in our emotions, which then takes us out of position. Cast off restraint. You go outside of the gate because you and your feelings. How do we know we're supposed to just stay? Stay on code, as they say. It's because the one time that one of our greatest leaders got in their feelings that messed up the entire plan. When Melek Dawi got in his feelings and started thinking with his lower head, that messed up somebody else's household. When Shaul started thinking with his feelings, when Shemuel said, said this is the vision from the creator, I'm gonna come and give this sacrifice. Wait here seven days until I come and give the sacrifice. That pocket started getting smaller and all of a sudden our quarterback shrunk. And he wasn't in position when the window opened up. He, all, he threw the ball before the man made the cut. It's all about vision. Every man has to have a vision for the household, but not every man has a vision for the community or for the nation. So that also has to be expressed. If the creator didn't give you the vision for the community, you just play your part in the community and fulfill your part of the vision that he did give you. But before brothers start logging off, I'm gonna go ahead and just bring it back to sum up and then we can, you know, I'll open the floor. The, the concept is the vision that the creator gives you for your house. Are you seeking it? Are you looking for it? And then once you have it, are you trying to fulfill it all in a matter of days or are you doing it step by step as he has shown you to fulfill it. So with that, I can all praises to the most high Yah. Um, I pray that it was edifying at least to one of the brothers that, you know, I did my job. Um, hallelujah. Uh, I open the floor for comments, questions, or you know, to continue to build, brothers. Shalom, shalom, Mazar. My toe, my key. Shalom, shalom. Um, toe blessing, first and foremost. Toe blessing, because it's definitely in the vein of what's been in my Rurok a lot, um, especially over the past couple of weeks. Um, without a vision, we, we, we tend to leave the children blind because even if we have a vision, it doesn't even, it may not come to pass in our era. Look at Dawid. Dawid had a vision of build, um, building a house for the Most High, but the Most High said, no, you're going to get the the materials needed, but your hands is too bloody to build it. But your son, he's the one that will build it. That 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 goes to show us that the vision that the Most High has for us, you know, when we're looking at it from the bigger standpoint and we're we're thinking beyond ourselves, we see that it's also to help guide our children to have visions as well, to keep the vision alive. That it that it may bear fruit, that that came the generational blessings, 
when we don't leave the proper tools needed or the proper materials needed for the next generation, we're, le we're leading them off course. The Most High chosen us in this time. He has given us the vision in this time. He has given us the, the signs in this time in order for us to prepare for what's to come. And because no man knows the hour of when things will happen, we also have to prepare our children for what's to come. So that, that vision is something that we really have to seek the creator for and make sure that the vision that we are doing and seeing is actually of the creator and not the, the visions of others. Because we can misstep like some of our forefathers have done by seeking the wrong counsel Rareborn, you know, you brought that out earlier. You know, we have to make sure that we are equipped with the creator. And that's why our relationship with the creator is so important. Because the deeper that we are growing with the creator, the clearer the path becomes. Because now a lot of the old things that was our own desires, our own wants, our own needs, all those are now being replaced because our minds are solely focused on Yah. So when we continue to focus on Yah, Yah makes the path clear through the confirmation, through the signs, because we're now in that waiting period as you was bringing forth, because now we can see in which way the creator is moving us that we may move accordingly. So uh, this was a, a dope um, lesson on, on so many layers. I had to put my, my little ones to sleep. That's why I wasn't so engaging, but I was definitely listening to everyone's word because this is something that we really need to embody. You know, these, these lessons that we are having, we have to really embody these lessons and take the, the, the necessary things that we need that we may be better equipped for when the Most High tells us to move. So Toda for allowing the Ruach to definitely speak forth through you, uh, Moray, um, to blessing. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, Toda will bow for your, your words as well, Laki. Uh, always glad for you to be on. Shah Shamar. Yeah, you know, I praise the Most High Yah for the lesson, the reading, you know, all the brothers who brought up other points. Nah. I found this lesson to be beneficial, um, you know, especially about, you know, just the vision. Um, how a man is not only supposed to, you know, have a vision you know, for his own household, but you know, also, you know, the community, you know, people that aren't necessarily, you know, in your household. Um, yeah, uh, well, I was listening to a song last night, and in the song, I believe, uh, person said if you want to change the world go home and love your family and I was thinking about you know Abraham you know and then his line you know just like Yako you know so if you know if you want to change the world go home go home and love your family and then I was just thinking about you know the whole you know idea of you know the most highest chosen people you know they're one family as a group you know so if they want to change the world you know you're gonna have to start loving each other you know so I yield Hey, you told me you were back here. I'm not sure if that's okay, Makiyahu. Is that okay, Makiyahu? Okay, hey, this is me. Uh, shalom, Adon. Um, shalom. Shalom yourself. Um, uh, do you have any words at all? I, I, I did, but it was early in the lesson, and uh, uh, there's no need in going backwards. Uh, it's okay. First of all, uh, you don't talk much, and I um, I didn't see your hand. Um, if you did raise it, so uh, slockly for that. Uh, but if you have words or don't, you're you know more than welcome, Elder. All right, let me let me, let me go backwards then. Um, the word "kana" means to revelate means revelation. It means a vision or a dream. So what it's saying is, is, is uh, you perish because I haven't given you a vision or a dream. 
This is what he's saying. And then he goes on and says, those who keep Torah, because that's what I have gave you, are happy. That's what's being saved. So you got, you got all of these malachs and prophets and seers that Yah sent with a vision or a dream to give you because we didn't keep Torah. He's trying to right the ship. He's trying to straighten us out. But we never get straight. We, have, we are always heading to destruction every step of the way. And when you talk about Lot, Lot was never part of the promise because he told Abraham to give him out his kinsmen. And Lot took, and Abraham took Lot with him. Right. So, so when, you, when it comes to Lot, no matter which way Lot went, Abraham's going to make it because Abraham was the promise. Lot was not. But Lot is the result of what happens when you take something that Yah told you to get away from. Now you got, you got two nations. You got Ammon and you got Moab. And they're all fighting against Israel. Because Abraham was supposed to leave Lot where he was. But that don't mean Lot, Yah can't bless you and things he told you not to do. But we did, we does things anyway, so it's in the Torah so you can see the results of what happened when we don't move like he commands us to move. And that's what we need to see. And I'm gonna stop right there because I really didn't want to come back. I really want to tell the end it because it's been, a, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. Um, okay. I I agree is okay. Um, I would say that if Lot or Lot was in Abraham's house, um, that's why he was brought, um, especially since Lot's father had, had passed. So if he was a part of Abraham's house at that time, then that would have been the reason why he came along. Um, so now I agree the, with you 110%. He was, he was, he took him as his son. But here's the problem. Okay. Yeah, I didn't say bring the son with you. He said get a gift from amongst your kinsmen. Now the only kinsman that he had that he was supposed to bring with him was his wife because that's part of him. Even though Lot was his son, his brother's son is his son. Yeah, I said get out from Mark. Yeah, Lot would have been all right with his, with, his, with his grandfather. But Abraham, done what Abraham done, he brought him with him. And when, the, when Lot grew, because Lot grew along with Abraham and the herdsman starts to argue. So now y'all could put peace between anybody he chooses to put, or he could put, or he could put enmity between anybody he chooses. When y'all choose to move, y'all have ways of moving that we don't understand. That's why he, that's why you don't think like he think. Or you don't move like he moves. Because he moves in ways we don't even think or consider. But you got to consider everything when he does stuff or when you read things. You got to consider. Well, why are they fighting from starters? Because you grew up so big to where, to where you couldn't spread out on the land where you was at and enjoy everything. You had to separate. And if Abraham had went over to Sodom and Gomorrah's side, he'd have been just as blessed because the blessing was Abraham. And Lot still would have been in trouble. That's what you got to consider. That's what you got to think about. There's a whole lot of stuff in this book that you got to consider and think about and not just look on the surface. You got to go into other things and see what's going on. That's why I love when you actually chime in. My, my only thought would be if he's in the house, see, when, when you look at, because of course he said, he said, get out of your father's house, right? So anything that is not in his house, but that is associated with his father, that's what he was told to leave behind. But I I can call you because I don't want to keep everybody on, but I get it. I get it. I was glad to have you all. Like, what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if there are any other elders on. He's not an elder, but um, uh, Adon Naraya. 
Koto. Yeah, Koto, Mishpaka, Koto. I just, um, you know, the lesson made me think about, you know, um, just like what the elder was saying, when, you, when we don't move the way the most high want us to move, how these things cause um, situations later on down the line. And I, and just with my family, you know, luck, you know, not all of us have, you know, our old traditions and things that were cut off due to the, you know, the transatlantic slave trade and things like that. But, you know, I was, I was blessed to be able to, you know, still have a little, you know, a lot of my family history and just the way, you know, what he was saying made me think of, you know, my great grandfather who was, who was a preacher, you know, a man of the word, blessed with everything that he was blessed with. But, um, you know, his last wife was actually a, a mistress that he had when he was with my great grandmother who had gotten sick. So when my great grandmother passed away, he married that woman. And then the children from that woman ended up being the children that almost took the land and destroyed everything that he had built before that we had to, you know, get straight later on. So, you know, that, you know, this lesson, you know, I was just sitting here reflecting on, you know, just listening to everybody and taking it all in. And, you know, with me just, you know, on our own journey, because every man knows his own situation the best. Whenever I advise, you know, men in my family, before I say anything to them, I always let them know that I'm just advising, but you know your situation and your journey the best. You know, I was sitting over here thinking about how, you know, it was so true what a lot of the brethren were saying, because I have an example of that, of how, you know, the one thing that, you know, my great grandfather did that was going against, you know, the ways of the most high, which he knew because he was a man of the word. And the results from those mistakes ended up being destroying everything that he was trying to build for his family as a whole. So like when you don't move how the most I want you to move, you know, it could cause ripple effects, you know, and things that you can't see, you know, the bigger picture, you know, like, you know, your vision isn't my vision, you know what I'm saying? So what you're seeing right now, you know, the most high may see something way down the line that we aren't seeing right now. So even though we're going through something, it may be to see if we have, you know, being tried by fire, like Yosef said, being worthy for what he has waiting for you at the end of the tunnel, you know? So Cole told me, you know I mean? Aki, you know, Mishpaka, everything that everybody was saying, you know, it was a, it was a blessing experiencing it and also being able to have something that, you know, I could give a real life example of everything that was said tonight. You know, I have a, I have a family experience that can testify to, you know, what, what you all were bringing. And I just wanted to share that with you all and uh, say, you know, you know, hallelujah for the lesson and for, you know, bringing us all to this moment. You know what I mean? Baruch ha, you know what I mean? Baruch Hashem, Yahuwah, and all who come in his name. Hallelujah. 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 Cain, Aki. Toda Abado. Yeah, that, that's, that's a uh, modern day time uh, Bible study. I mean, uh, Bible story right there that you got in your Mishpachah, Aki. Um, hallelujah. Um, well, if there's not any other hands or uh, comments or statements that we're going to go ahead and um, pray out, I'm uh, going to actually uh, ask you, Adon, um, the riot too. Uh, close us out and um just want to say uh told everybody again to everybody who came on um Shabuwo is june 4th june 5th here in va uh get with me or uh saw your hand in or um adon maury samat for uh details and um for let's know everything you need to know hallelujah hallelujah it's a clear our hearts and our minds. Brukata Yahua Helloenu Melaka Olam. Ashir Natan La Nu Torato Torat Emet Wahai Olam Nata Betokenu. Brukata Yahua no Tain Ha Torah. Blessed are you, Yahua Elohim, ruler of the cosmos, who has given us his Torah, the Torah of truth and life everlasting, set in our midst. May we give thanks for you bringing us to this moment, Yah for this word that we received tonight through our, through our Maureen. May we may these words placed upon the hearts of all who needed to receive it. And may you continue to bless your people, Yasserel, and 
bring peace and safety to all of us, wherever we may be. As we rest ourselves tonight, may your mother king watch over us and watch over our household and watch over our children. May you not bring us to a matter of distress and fill us with peace and safety as we wake up in this world with the blessing of the breath of life that you blew into all living creatures at the foundation of creation. And may you allow us to live righteously and be righteous examples before all those to whom you bring into our realm. May these words that we receive tonight be with us and may it carry us and may it be as a righteous sacrifice that we lay down before you as we be, could be in many places, but we are here today listening to those who are inspired by your Ruach HaKodesh to bring about these lessons and these words to us in these moments. May we be seen righteously before your eyes and you bring your happy face among your people of Yahshua and remove your angry face and place it upon those that were used to judge us. And may we be seen righteously rejoicing at the rebuilding of our Yerushalayim and the throne of Dawid. May all things be for your glory and esteem, y'all. May you guide and protect our children and the households and the marriages of all those who are seeking to live right by you. And may our hearts forever be meditating upon your word and may your word forever correct the error of our ways as we attempt to return to you with a pure conscience, a clear heart and a firm meditation. And may our children see us and be guided by us and be righteous preparations for you, for the blessings and the prophecies that we know will come, Yahweh willing, in our lifetime. So to you, Yah, we offer these things unto you and we give thanks to all those who participated in this, in this lesson tonight. For it was truly, truly a better cow. Baruch atah Yahuwah, Baruch Hashem Yahuwah, Baruch Habab Hashem Yahuwah. Blessed are you, Yahuwah, bless the name Yahuwah, and bless he who comes in the name of Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Selah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Torah Ba'aki, Torah Ba'akem, Lala Tod, may I have a Barak Shabua, and um, we'll see y'all, uh, I believe, on um, Kamishi or Thursday. I think it's a gift, right, uh, Star, you know, this week? No, down Hebrew, uh, the Hebrew, uh, Okay, okay. What's called study? He was study, uh, curriculum study. Them. Okay, yes, All right, well, um, I'll see y'all, um, next time we meet up. Shalom, shalom. Hallelujah. Lala Tov, Mishpaka. Lala Tov, Mishpaka. Lala Tov, Mishpaka.